SpongeBob SquarePants. Despite it being one of Nickelodeon's most popular shows, it never really did any crossovers. Yeah, sure, there was Patchy's appearance in Big Time Rush and the Nicktoons games, but other than that, SpongeBob has never really crossed over with any Nickelodeon shows. And it's for good reason. The creator of SpongeBob, Steven Hillberg, didn't really like the idea of SpongeBob crossing over other shows. Which makes sense because SpongeBob existing in the same world as Timmy Turner is just weird. Then after Hillberg passed away due to AL. Plus, two Spongebob spin-offs came out, and these spin-offs were hated by the Spongebob fandom because they were originally announced after Hillenburg's death, which is sus. Later it will be revealed that Hillenburg was involved in one of the spin-offs, with him being credited as the creator and producer of one of them, which makes it less bad I, I guess, but as for the Patrick Star show, that show was made after his death so I can't really be the judge of that. And then in 2022, Nickelodeon announced something that that would change the Spongebob franchise forever. And because of that, the world is still a terrible place. Other than that, my stress of getting physical release, a crossover between the OG Spongebob show, Camp Coral, and the Patrick Star show was announced called The Title Zone, originally set to release on November 25th, 2022, aka Black Friday of that year. But due to unknown reasons, it was delayed to January the 13th, 2023, aka Friday the 13th of that year, which is more fitting considering the plot of the crossover. Today, I'm going to be talking about this crossover mainly out of curiosity, mainly because this is a crossover between a show and spin-offs that no one gave a about. And by no one gives a I mean people over the age of 12. Will the crossover deem these spin-offs or will the inclusion of the spin-offs bring the special down? Well, let's find out as we go through the Midnight Zone. Before we talk about the crossover, first I have to explain the context on how the crossover is happening. The crossover takes place in the Tidal Zone, which is a reference to the Twilight Zone in the Intertidal Zone, the original comic that Hillenburg made that inspired Spongebob. If for some reason the name Tidal Zone sounds familiar, that's actually because the concept made its first debut in the episode, No Pictures Please, where the entire episode takes place in the Tidal Zone. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a bit of a spoiler actually, I'm sorry. Pretty much this special is a bit similar to the Legends of Bikini Bottom with it being an anthology special but this time there's a story connecting it all together as they're told by the French narrator. If you want to avoid spoilers get to this time stand in the video. Okay the thing tying this all together is Grandpa. And if you're wondering who he is, well he is Patrick's grandfather from the Patrick Star Show. What happens is that in the end of the first episode of the anthology he ends up being lost in the multiverse and after this he a cameo in every episode included here, trying to make it home while all this other stuff happens in the background, even though for us, this happens in the background and everything else is the front and center. This concept is very interesting and it actually makes the crossover anthology make sense. Sound like Legends of Bikini Bottom, where the only thing tied in together is bedtime story and of idea. Just outer space. This anthology starts with the Patrick Star Show, and to be honest, this is the first time I ever seen the show. When the show came out, I avoided watching it because I heard nothing but bad things about it, and I don't really respond well to disappointment. Which is why I did not watch Amazing Spider-Man 2. Seriously, I have both movies on Broadway and I still haven't seen the second one. But we can all agree that this is a cool way to own the movie because look at it, it's it's a it's a it's a fucking collector's edition. Pretty much what happens in this episode after some talk show shenanigans, Patrick accidentally shrieks himself and his family to a really tiny size. And at first, Patrick, Skradina, and their parents like being small until Grandpa mistakes him for bugs. And now the rest of the episode is pretty much the Star family messing with Grandpa. And I love it. Then Rue shrinks the Star family even smaller to save them from Grandpa while showing them an utopian city made of glass that Patrick's dad destroys while singing. Then when Grandpa is trying to kill his family, he accidentally goes through a door that leads him to Egypt, starting his descent into the multiverse. While the episode ends with Patrick accidentally shrinking him and his family again, just Mr. Star to break reality and returning them home. Or so they think, because now Sandy from the prime timeline 
the time universe is watching them through a microscope while the French narrator watches her from within the tidal zone. Other than that real world ending, I really like this part of the anthology. It gives me the best first impression of Patrick Star show. This episode is just pure nonsense, but it's a show about Patrick Star, and I feel like this style kind of suits him. I honestly like how goofy Patrick, the parents, and grandpa are. I can picture this getting repetitive if I had to watch more episodes. Of what it is, it's a SpongeBob spinoff that I can picture myself watching in short sessions just to goof off and nothing more. It doesn't make it a bad thing, but who am I to judge? I only watched one episode of this shit. <laughs> Most Binary Bottom is an episode that takes place in an alternate Bikini Bottom. This Bikini Bottom, I mean Binary Bottom, being populated by robots. So I guess in this universe, Eggman won? And this episode is just Spongebob going through his normal routine, getting ready for work while playing with his pet, Robot Gary. Then he goes to work and Gary hides in Spongebob's back compartment so he can go to work with him. And then this causes Gary to scare Squidbot, causing him to fall into a that of oil and this starts a wild goose chase with spongebob going after them and then everyone else going after them too because why not it's a f***ing cartoon then sandroid shows the chase because her all graphic dome gets destroyed by gary and squidbot then the chase scene ends after they end up in lube lagoon and here, Sandroid fuses with the robots of Binary Bottom, and they go off and start the robot apocalypse. The end. Ah man, if you thought point to community manslaughter at the end of Road to Christmas was the most what the fuck ending in the entire show, no, you're you're wrong. It, it, it's this. This one is like probably one of the most out of pocket SpongeBob endings to ever happen. Well, what the hell is going on in the writer's room? What the fuck are they on? Honestly, Sandroid starting the robot apocalypse is not something that I was expecting. Well, there's that plus seeing Karen as a fish. We will have to wait 24 damn years for someone to do this. And I love it. Also, I like the robot designs of most of the characters. Except for Sandy, I honestly think this is the worst thing that ever happened to the character. But in fact, this episode is okay. I do for what it is, but honestly, it's not one of the best modern Spawn episodes. Especially if that cartoon is from the Tidal Zone. The Tidal tide, 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 tide Zone. Camp Coral is a show that I'm starting to feel less bitter towards. Because at first, when I watched the first episode for free on YouTube, I honestly didn't really like it. It was SpongeBob, but younger. But now, I actually feel the same way, but I actually think the show is a little bit decent, I guess? Again, I only watched the spin off episodes that were included in this anthology, so who am I to judge? So in the episode, The Switch Glitch, Karen and Patrick switch bodies due to Patrick eating all the lightning berries. No, I'm not kidding. That's how it happens. And the rest of the episode is then the rest of the episode is Patrick and Karen having fun in their new bodies until Karen wants her body back. Fortunately for her, Sandy makes a device that can allow Karen and Patrick to switch back bodies, and it works. Now Karen and Patrick are back in their old bodies. And because it's Patrick, he leaves the device on, and this causes everyone to act like Patrick ending the episode. To be honest, all these endings are weird, but this one I think is the most deja vu because the ending here is pretty much the episode of spongebob where everyone except for karen and sandy just starts to become dumb like patrick but this time everyone's little ding dongs the ending is mid but the episode is okay the ending is mid but the episode itself is okay i don't really hate it but i don't really like it either i like the little frogger boss performance when karen is in patrick's body he does a good impression of the karen voice and the same goes for jill tolly the patrick voice is girly one of the easiest voices to do, so I don't know if that's saying much. But nonetheless, they both did a really good job in this episode. Plus, animation is okay, I guess, for a TV standard is good, but at least it's not the new version of Rugrats. Hand it to me.
You're Going to Payphone is honestly the best episode in this entire anthology. Yeah, that's right, I said what I said. In this episode, Mr. Krabs gets a free payphone after seeing a coin insert itself in it. Yeah, that, that's literally how he gets it. At first, Mr. Krabs likes having the payphone to Krusty Krab. Then the payphone starts to tell him to give out free Krab patties, free money, and he'll even tell him to give point in the deed to the Krusty Krab. And every time this happens to Krabs, he's under what looks like to be a hypnotic spell. Then when Krabs tries to get the coins out to collect profits, it's revealed to him that a little demon has been living in the payphone and was the one calling Krabs to do awful things. And then as a piece of karma, the demon shrinks Krabs and puts him in the payphone in his place while the demon goes off into the unknown. The episode ends with Pointin now in the possession of the Krusty Krab, ordering Squidward to throw away the payphone and leaving Krabs stuck in the payphone forever, alone in the dumpster. Okay, that one was a little bit dark. Honestly, Krabs, like in The Curse of the Hex, did this to himself. But at least this time, the writers actually made the episode funny. The fact that he gave the Krusty Krab to Poynton is super funny. Hell, even Poynton was surprised that this shit happened. Both time Krabs is giving away shit for free and being trapped in a payphone is hilarious and deserved. Yeah, I know this shit is messed up because Mr. Krabs is one of the main characters, but because this is modern Mr. Krabs, I don't care how thick he is. He's a freaking bastard. Must give away money. <laughs> A skin wrinkle on time isn't really an episode, it's more of an epilogue to end the anthology. If you didn't pay attention during the anthology, Grandpa made cameos in Binary Bottom, The Switch Glitch, well on his way home. The whole episode is Grandpa going through the multiverse, and of course weird shit happens because it's the multiverse. And it ends with Grandpa returning home, or so he thinks, because now he's trapped in a universe where his family is just a bunch of flies. I I'm not kidding, that's what happens. This isn't the weakest point, but it's- This isn't the weakest point of the special, but it's also not the strongest. It's shorter than the other episodes and the anthology. Based on the bright side, Grandpa and the opening sequence of Spongebob is the only memorable part, and that's it. Other than that, as an epilogue, it's good. As a- Other than that, as an epilogue, it's decent, but as an episode, it's very mid. Baby. This special was truly an event to watch, but unfortunately for me, I couldn't watch it live due to the fact that I was at work at the time. But the fact that these three shows crossed over is just insane. The special reminds me of, again, Elijah's Bikini Bottom, which is also a special that I covered on this channel. With both specials being stories told to us by a live action host, both of whom were played by Tom Kenny. But unlike Legends, Towel Zone wasn't really mid, it's good, but it has its flaws. With the weakest part of the ufology being Camp Coral with the Switch glitch. I would have said the epilogue, but again, it's not a flip of so it would be unfair to compare it to a full length episode. The strongest parts in my opinion were the Patrick Star show with Streaking Star and Spongebob with Payphone. These episodes were fun to watch and were definitely a highlight. Seeing Omen getting torture is just funny to me, especially if it's well deserved. You want to watch this with either family or friends to see if the spin-offs are crap? I recommend it. I think it's a nice introduction point. None of the episodes here are bad by any means. Now that they're watching this crossover, I'm starting to feel less hateful towards the spin-offs and from what I've seen so far, they're not that bad, but time will tell if they get better because both spin-offs are currently in their first season, so they have a lot of time to improve. Plus, it's awesome to see these shows cross over regardless of them being spin-offs or not. But at the end of the day, it's a better Legends Bikini Bottom, and I love it for it. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment what your favorite moment in the mythology was. Again, a lot of funny stuff happened here, so it could be anything. Also, thank you for getting the last video all the way to, I think it's over uh, 5,000 views now? 500. thousand views and uh, almost 200 likes yeah well let's just hope this video gets 200 likes guys <laughs> it's been a bird so and you are in the midnight zone <laughs>